terminar con esto. Hello, hello. Welcome to this new episode of Far From Home, a talk with a friend abroad. In just, okay, now we are live. Welcome again to this new episode of Far From Home, a talk with a friend abroad. This week, I'm really honored and, and happy to have Duncan with us. Uh, Duncan is Canadian, living in France, but with international and experiencing also diversity and inclusion. Really pleased and honored to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much, Viviana. It's great to be with you again and welcome to everybody who's joining us today live. I think it's interesting like our story or the way we met because we were uh, like um, connected to uh, Ippolito who is from Uganda and he asked us to help him in setting up um, the African Diversity and Inclusion Center that now it was, uh, as I also mentioned in my post, like affected like economically and socially like by COVID and this is something maybe we will tackle also a little bit later. And so it was like an online relationship because we, we, we meet uh, a few times online and then we start also sharing some of our like personal and professional experience and so this is why we are, we are here today. And so let's start with, with you and your experience and how you ended up in, in France, if you want to share with us a little bit of your story. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, on one level, it's very easy how I ended up in France. So I, I, was, I was born in, I came for love. That, that's the answer. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I was born in, in Canada. My background is, is European. My background is Scottish. And so most of my family is still in Scotland. My parents came over to the U.S. first, um, but they had moved to Canada. So I was, I was born Canadian and um, I lived in, in uh, different cities in Canada and, and in the U.S. and then in Europe. So I kind of grew up um, very, very privileged life, I must say. Um, but as an expat kid or what's sometimes called a third cultural kid mm -hmm. and um, I was able to travel a lot uh, through, through school trips. Uh, I, I was living in Belgium, and uh, it's easy to get around uh, from Belgium. And uh, I was really blessed with a lot of um, opportunities. I was at an international school, so there were people from all over the world. Uh, and um, I came back to Canada to do my university studies initially and felt completely in between, as we say, as you said, yes. and, and as we say, so this in between cultures. And um, that's, that, that was a challenge growing up, but, but I came to appreciate what I learned from that and the, the adaptability and the flexibility and the incorporation of other ways of looking at, you know, my friend from Sweden didn't look at things the, the, the same way as, as my friend from Colombia did. So, you know, it, I grew up with all of that and, um, and I married, um, a Mexican, so uh, and and so that's a whole other uh, cultural experience, and also it's a mixed race marriage. So uh, there's all kinds of elements there. He took a job here in France as an expat from Toronto, where we were living at the time, and after two and a half years, to my shock and amazement, he said, "I want to stay in France." And shock and amazement because it had been brutal for him working for a French a large group um, you know multinational very traditional French culture which will mean something to, to some of our listeners and viewers um, but just to say very hierarchical and um, and and he was you know that you know not French, French. and um, and not white and didn't speak French as a first language and um, you know, was, was the guy with new ideas and the challenged authority and, you know, brilliant, brilliant, but wasn't really welcome. Yeah. And yeah. so he said, I have opportunities here. Will you come to France? And so after having lived apart for two and a half years and tried to have a, the relationship long distance, it was brutal to be apart. I think of the couples now who were separated because of COVID, it's so difficult. So I 
I changed my life and came to France. And that was five years ago. Good. I, I think that's interesting what you mentioned because sometimes, and, and this is also what in, in, when I do my, my training in intercultural management, I always say like, don't judge because, and don't make assumption because sometimes what we can see, it, it is only the surface of like, you fit in this culture, you don't fit in this culture, there is something you don't fit. But then the cultural adaptation process is actually happen like deep inside each one of us. And sometimes Absolutely. there is something that we cannot see and that actually is working this process of adaptation or the person can find his way of living between cultures or to fit in that culture, even if like it seems so different from his own. Yeah, it's so true. And I, I think that adaptation piece is so important because behind that is this, this um, you know, we think about, I, I think about ecosystems, right? I think about how nature adapts to changing conditions and how we've evolved even, you know, as, as the species. And so, so we have to, we, we live in a world now where everybody is having to adapt, you know, because of Corona. Exactly. And so there's this, exponential uh, change that we're all living in and this exponential um, uncertainty as well because it just seems like it's one thing after another and we know that there might be you know around the corner something else but we don't know what it is and so so I think this ability to adapt um, whatever our circumstance is um, because our circumstance may be um, like one of my my friends who just, just going back to Africa for a moment, and we were talking about resilience because that's part of that adapt adaptability also. And she said, for the women in my community, if I were to ask them about resilience, and I, when I do ask them about resilience, they will say it's about endurance. It's about being able to get the water, fetch the water and, and the firewood every day. And that's obviously in a rural environment. But um, I think that the ability for us to adapt uh, is something that is accelerated in the context of international experience, if you will, or cross-cultural experience, because you don't actually have to travel yes. to, to have that you know, global mindset. Um, we, we simply have to open ourselves to the diversity that is around us. Yes. I was mentioning earlier you know, about our, our new neighbors who are from yes. Turkey, and so I'm, I'm, I'm learning more about Turkey just because you know, we're having this exchange. So. Um, it's, it's really, I love this idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the context of, of a global mindset, because it's the diversity of, of thought and experience. And so what's it, what's it like for you, you know, where you are with, with COVID? I mean, that's something we're all talking about. Yes. And, and then it's including that. And then it's understanding that somebody else's experience is just different yes not better it's not worse it's just different it's different exactly. and so how can we mobilize our our, our differences and, and of course that's a strength uh, and um, and how can we learn from one another uh, so that we can adapt faster to these changes Exactly. And I think the, the way you describe, let's say, your experience and, and also now, I think you are a real example of, yes, third culture kid, but also global mindset and this ability like to be open, be curious and, and, and fight and enjoy the diversity around you because like it can enrich you. And, yeah. um, and especially now that, yeah, as, as you said, there is uncertainty and, and we need to like adapt to this new context. So, I was, I was actually like COVID for you, the, the challenges that maybe you face and all your experience before helped you to go through this because you already had like some skills. Yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, first of all, I, I you know, I have so much privilege. And, and so, um, and, you know, as a man in the world, <laughs> right, as a white man in the world, um, uh, with a certain, you know, with a level of education and, and access to income. And I mean, so the first thing I have to acknowledge is all that privilege that, that comes with that, right? So when I talk about my experience of COVID, it's within that, that context. Um, part of what opened me up to thinking about global mindset and, 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 and not just being, people talk about, you know, 
embracing difference, right? I mean, I'm, I'm making a little, a little bit sarcastic there, but for me, it's not about embracing it. It's about learning and it's about this, this fascination with other people's stories. Um, I mean, I know you're, you're um, an expert on migration and I've always been fascinated by other people's migration stories and, you know, living them and, and, you know, living my own with all, even with all the privilege has, and coming here has taught me a lot, but the, the downside for me of Corona, um, I'll just talk about my family. So my, because my parents are, 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 are 87, 89, turning 88, 90 this year. So, so they're getting on and they live in Canada and I can't visit them. And normally I would be able to see them several times a year. I, I would make a point to go over and it was a great point of joy for me when I heard my mom say, this is about a year or so after I moved, two years maybe after I moved here to France. And she said, you're closer to us now than you were when you were living in the same state, in the same province. And I said, wow, I, I feel that too. And, and so the distance made, inspired me to be more creative about, you know, the time we had when we were not seeing each other, but then other things like, um, you know, I, I would, when I would visit my parents, I would take my mom out on a date, right? This was a new thing. We've never done this before. But that was something we did in person. And that reminds me, I need to create like a virtual experience of that um, to, to replace it. But that's, that's the hard thing for me. And so uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing about that. I mean, I'm not sure whether maybe I need to actually move back to Canada. It's, it's that big for me. Yeah. Um, I really miss them and I want to be with them at this, at this stage in their life. So, so there's that the rest of my life, not such a big thing. I, um, I'm a, a, a thriver of, of AIDS, meaning I had an AIDS diagnosis at one point that was back in 1990. And so I had to deal with a different kind of, of pandemic and, uh, and, um, you know, anyone who's, who's living in, in Africa, for example, or other places just where um, there are tropical diseases and things that we don't have to deal with um, in, uh, in, in, in Europe or, or in North America, um, or, or in, at least in Canada, maybe in the United States, there, people have to live with all sorts of things. And, 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 there's, and, 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 and being exposed to the potential for our mortality uh, is, is present. But it was present for me in a very dramatic way because I was told I had two years to live. And so I had to develop this ability to adapt and, and be flexible and be, be resilient uh, 30 years ago. So I found that with COVID, I've, I've been leaning into those things, uh, those practices more than I was before because there's more stress, because I'm at slightly higher risk um, because it it because it does require an adaptation for for all of us. I think. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing. I think that was extremely important, and yeah, because also there are other experiences that we can relate to COVID, and also areas of the world that they were used to. Uh, pandemic or treating like illnesses not it, it, we, we were we were lucky and also I think and this is maybe sometimes I'm, I'm brutally here but I think it is also I, I think a natural like mechanism that you we put in place so we don't want to think that we are at risk and so we want to keep like everything that it was before this idea of like going back to normal I was mentioned before to you I had this like chat with my friends and I was telling them but maybe this year was not the time of going on holiday as nothing happened but it's difficult for us to acknowledge that there is like an adaptation that maybe we, we have to make especially if I think our life was never at risk or we didn't have any experience with our, our health because if you if you had something like in my case, was not was not so um, complicated, but I was in the hospital for a while, and 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 for me was my also my thinking sometimes is a little bit egoistic, maybe, but I don't want to go back there 
So I, I, I will take care of myself and I, I will avoid any like behavior that can like get me back there because I don't want what not an easy uh, like time of my life. But again, I think it's a natural mechanism to like think that now things are going back to normal or they're already like back to normal or, or we will find way to adapt to the new reality. There's a, there's a, a theory about a behavioral theories coming from psychology about how people adapt to change and and the first immediate response that we that we all have it's it's kind of hardwired into us as an evolutionary um, uh, biological response is that we tend to we tend to resist change that's mm -hmm. our first response we tend to resist change because it makes us uncomfortable because it breaks the patterns and the routines it it, it you know and, and if we, if we have um you know, if, 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 if we, if just having housing, for example, is, is, is our, you know, is the thing that, that keeps us together, um, then, you know, what happens if we don't have housing, for example, or, um, you know, there are many, um, many, many situations where, you know, the real, you know, we, we, we need to acknowledge the real this, this example is coming out of a little bit of left field, but the, the role that the women play in, in maintaining peace, mm -hmm. right? Um, holding families together, doing, doing all of that, that um, sense making work. It's, it's not, it's not the treaties are signed that that doesn't bring peace. It's, it's the work um, that happens uh, once that uh, takes place. And a lot of that work is done by women. So anyway, just to say that, we tend to respond with resistance to change and that's normal. The question is, what do we do after that initial biological response happens? So after two or three minutes, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, what, then we have a choice about how we move forward and how we adapt. And, and that, that is a difficult process. And part of what helped me open up to that was actually having these different experiences because my dad sometimes would come home and just say, we're moving to Belgium. Wh what? Where? I, you said I we were going back to Canada. Oh, no, we're going to Belgium. So I was, I was, you know, I was used to, you know, unfortunately I was able to go to school, but I was in a different school every year and a half. And so I was always saying goodbye to my friends and always having to say, you know, try and make new friends. And, um, and, and I had to get used to that saying goodbye and then saying hello and um and adapting going back to adaptation right adapting because as a boy what mattered was how good were you at sports Sport. <laughs> and so when i came from i was in, in montreal in montreal um i was playing foot like uh, uh soccer soccer <laughs> i go to the states <laughs> It wasn't happening. It was like, so how good are you at basketball? How good are you at American football? How good are you at baseball? Baseball, baseball was the worst. I was always the last boy to be chosen, you know? Nobody yeah. wants Duncan, you know? And so I had to adapt and try and fit in as best I could. And I think that's the, the thing that we all have to do now with COVID. We have to, we have to adapt and that's what people are doing. Um, you know, I, I, there are so many stories, um, you know, that, that, that really inspire and move me. And of course, um, you know, I feel like I have it easy. Yes. But it, it's interesting what you mentioned. I will, I will, I would like to explore a little bit more because it can be useful also for our audience. So, so you were in, in, in the French, um, part of Canada, so in Quebec, and then you yeah. moved to the U S um, yeah. So and sometimes we say North America or like the American, but actually you were just explained that there are differences between Canada and the US. So one is about sport. Any other difference that maybe you can share and was for you kind of a cultural shock or, or that you need to adapt even more that you were considering to support? I found out in a very blatant way because it was in front of me how shall I put this? Um, Americans don't really know very much about Canada. 
<laughs> um, and most of the, because the, it was, you know, I mean, some teachers maybe a little, but basically I'm hanging out with other kids, right? And, you know, um, they didn't care where I came from. Where I came from. They didn't want to know anything about, you know, about Canada. And when I moved back to Canada from Belgium, because I decided I wanted to go to university, uh, undergrad at least in Canada, I, nobody wanted to know about, you know, about Belgium, right? I mean, and so it wasn't even just an American thing, but, but certainly there was a, a real lack of, um, in, in the school systems that I went to, there was a real lack of um, uh, what I would describe as a more international approach to history. So I remember we had American history for three years in a row. We didn't have, you know, yes. the history of Africa. We didn't have the history of China. We didn't have the history of, it was just, Yes, I think that sometimes this can be, and, and there is like a debate around you, like history, what, what kind of history we can like consider, not only our maybe European or American history, but also have like open and, and be informed also and study what was happening maybe in the same time, but in our, in other parts of the world. But I think it's interesting also, and because you as a kid, you were, you were like living all these international experiences and sometimes what is happening is then you move to another country and actually yet yeah, they don't care maybe, but also maybe the teachers are not prepared to having you from another country. And so yeah. you are alone dealing with all like your past experience, your new experience and try to fit. And, and you, maybe you have a lot to say or not a lot to say, but yeah. inside of you there is a lot and you cannot share it because they don't care, they don't ask. And maybe they are only care if you're good in football or, or soccer. So yeah. it's something that when we do intercultural, uh, like cultural training, when, when we do with teacher, we, we suggest the teacher to be aware when they have like foreign kids coming from other country or other experience. Yeah, and, and it's really, part of it is really being able to, um, to, to recognize that there's no, there's just difference. There's not, you know, this difference is better than this yes. difference. There's no, you know, this isn't, it's just a different way of, of, of approaching um, a problem with or, or it's a different way of, of, of interacting. Uh, it's a different way of, um, of thinking about the world, um, about how we relate to other people. So think, you know, manners and customs, things like that. I thought, honestly, at the beginning, I thought, you know, maybe 80% of, you know, being in France was the language, you know? Yes. It's not. No. It might be 50%, maybe, maybe. but 50% is all of the cultural norms that somebody living in France would get from the time they were born. Yes. And there is no place where you can go and find it. There's no book, there's no training. I don't care what people promise. It's not possible because the layers of it, I mean, I feel like this is, a, is, is, is lifelong and culture is dynamic, right? It's changing all the time. There's vocabulary in French that didn't, wasn't really in common usage uh, two years ago and, or it was considered slang and, you know, um, so, but now in, in, in a certain, there's about seven layers of French. Um, it depends who you're talking to and, and what the context is. Um, but, but this idea that, that um, you know, it, it's not even that we, this is why it's so important to, I think, to open ourselves and be, be surrounded and, and have networks. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, I was fascinating to learn about your background because it's very different from mine. Um, but here we are, we landed together, um, you know, on, on this advisory board. And I think, you know, I think that's rich because I think there is this dynamic process of culture and learning and like everything else, it's accelerating, right? It's, 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 it's evolving faster yes, absolutely. all the time. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are almost at the end of our talk, but there is the last question. What like resources did you find or, or discover, rediscover uh, during or to face these challenging times being with your, the relation with your parents or living in France, living far from home, living close to your, to your partner? And, and I think, and also just to mention the anxiety, right, of uncertainty that, that all of us have, right? And, um, and, and, and the, the, the sense of not, of being less in control, right? Because yes. uh, I think those are really big things for people. The resources that I found the most useful are the resources that build all the things we've been talking about in terms of adaptability and flexibility and, and diversity and inclusion uh, and, and resilience. And that is the work that we do on ourselves, right? Meaning um, our, our strength is inside us, right? And so it's any practice, like for me, meditation, mindfulness, um, reconnecting with nature in a big way. In France here, we were allowed to go outside for one hour, up to one hour every day during the, the lockdown. And I discovered my neighborhood. And I discovered the trees and I discovered the plants and we could only go within one kilometer. So mm -hmm. that was it. And you, you had to carry a, a, a um, I'm not sure, attestation, I'm just gonna say, I'm not sure what the English word is. You had to carry this, this document, to the, document yes. yeah, document to the police, right? So you could be stopped and you couldn't be outside of that. Per so, so it really focused, the, you know, the world became smaller, but the world inside of us is infinite. Yes. And so the, the resources uh, for me, it's just, just a reminder uh, for me and, and, you know, and for everyone, it's just, we, we, we need to try and stay more, like go deeper, you know, into, into self-awareness, go deeper into, all of us have these, this, these strengths that come from our life experience. And, and it's really to lean on those and, and build off of those, I think. Thank you. I, thank you. I think it's, it's, it's a great experience. And also some, some of us shared this. And I, I think for me, it's extremely important. Like self-awareness is really the starting point to then like face challenging situation or like meeting and actually um, meeting people and, and enjoy or discover the diversity. Everything like start from you. And so now like to close our talk, there is a message to your country or countries in your language languages. So feel free to send a message so in your language or to your country. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you want to send a message to Canada in French? Oh, that's an invitation to me. Yes, exactly. Oh, I thought it was an to invitation you. to our audience. Okay. No, no, it's to um, you. And I will check if the audience they have. Um, well, you know, I just... I, I have family in Mexico, Canada, and, 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 and um, Scotland. So just, um, you know, sending my, send my, send my love. And, and also to, to everybody that I've been blessed with, um, with, with meeting and, and, and working with, especially during this time and the people who are really, I, who I know are struggling. So just sending my, my blessings uh, to them. Super. Thank you. We, don't, we, we have like some likes, but no questions. But like, feel free to, we will share maybe also like Duncan um, contacts on, 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 on comments of, of the yes. video. So, because he's also a business coach and he has a lot of, of experience, he's also a mentor. So I think he's, he's a really a nice person to get in, get in touch with. And, and yeah, I was happy to, I was happy to, uh, to make new connections. Thank you. Thank you very much again for sharing and thank you our audience to follow us. And we will see uh, you in a week, next Wednesday. Thank you again. And Thank take you, care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.